Hello and welcome to the first of several development blogs on the construction of Fort Avalon. The idea of producing Fort Avalon originally came from the fact that the Swampy Moon outpost has been declining rapidly in activity due to lag and because the current style was outdated, requiring a revamp. Another reason for such a large production is due to my inability to create a proper game because of the time split with VAK. I also saw this as an opportunity to build on my skills and give us something that's of a similar standard to modern forts. I shall now give you a show around of the fort as it is in the 0.1.3 build. I shall also be giving an insight into what is to come. I hope you enjoy. Alright, so as you can see we've immediately arrived in a large rocky area. It's meant to be a valley but you can imagine it's anything you like. So over here we have the starting base for the raiders and down the opposite end kind of near that control point beam is the main base which we'll get onto in a minute. Anyway this is just a random spawn point at the moment it's just here for testing purposes. So this is these are my two testing tools this is the excavator and I'll go into details on that in a minute. The raiders will spawn uh, every time they spawn with this pistol which is a powerful magnum revolver with a low clip size but higher damage than the Vactovian STA-18. Okay, so this currently isn't finished inside here. There's no decoration or anything. But as you can see we have quite a few things. I'll go into details. Um, here is the armory. Or these will be the armory givers. This is a refiner and this is a weapons bench. And these are just here randomly so, uh, for testing. They are HDS suit givers. No, HDS givers. Sorry. Heavy duty suit givers. And they will give you a heavily armoured suit with, well, shields, a gun, and that's about it. And a jetpack. Anyway, moving on. So, let's give the weapons bench a try. Now, as you can see, currently I have no materials, so I'm just going to change that. Actually, no. I'm going to demonstrate the excavator to you all first. Let me just get over here. It's just for easy navigation. Now, as you may have noticed down here, we have a heat bar, and this will uh, get lower once there's a, st a periodic storm, which we may get one of, we may not. It depends on the random number that's generated in the script. The time of, well, the time of spawning for any storm is every 10 to 40 minutes. And it can last every, no, it can last 2.5 minutes to 10 minutes, I believe I've set it as. That was a massive decrease on the rate from previous uh, versions of this place, as it was a bit too frequent then. Anyway, the excavator. So we start out with F. Now I have had some complaints about this sound, about it being annoying, and also I've realised how much it lags when you have a fast, uh, yeah, fast looped sound. This is using a fire sound currently. You know you can hear the fire sounds over there. You might from your right. Well, it's basically one of them sped up to an incredibly high speed, which is causing lag when other players are nearby. So I will be removing this very soon. Anyway, walk up to the oars and click. And you will mine them. And if you notice down here, we are collecting ore. It is a bit fiddly sometimes, but it's all in the skill, as to say. So anyway, now we've collected a few ore, let's go back to the base and I'll show you what's next in the process. So this uh, this capture point on top will be uncapturable. I'll go on to the raider system, raiding system in a minute. But um, it's just a general base of action for the raiders. That can't be taken over by Vactobians. 
Okay, so here's the refiner, and I shall show you what it does. It is a little dodgy at the moment. I have some improvements that I've got to make on it before the before we go into beta. But as you can see, it deploys parts. Ah, hang on. Ah, yes, it's working perfectly now. Sometimes before it's just given me free at a time I've had to wiggle around, but that, as you can see, it's working fine. And basically, that's how you earn materials. So once your ores are empty, uh, you can just go get some more, and then you spend materials on the weapons bench. Da 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 da. And you can buy an assortment of weapons from here. I already have quite a few weapons. Let me just check which ones I do have because I've uh, disabled the ability to have several of each weapon. You unlock weapons, basically. Okay, so we've got those. Let's try the SCA-14 and VC-1. But first, seeing as they are quite pricey, you can tell you'll have to save up for them for quite a while. That's intended. Okay. Okay, let's try this. SCA-14. So you click it once, and it will give... Up here, I haven't done this yet. This will be an image showing the weapon. And possibly other stuff. Maybe. Some little labels coming off, labeling different parts. That would be interesting. Yeah, you can click on each of these, and it will give you some info on the weapon. Oops. Yeah, you can walk away from this bench, and it, the GUI will disappear automatically. And you can also close it using that button. Anyway, let's get a weapon. Click it once, and then again, and it will appear. And now, the special thing about this is that the weapons are being loaded from the site through the insert service, so they are not inside the actual game all the time, which should reduce lag by quite a significant amount, considering there are the ISA weapons as well. Okay, let's also get this. Oh, hang on. There we go. So we have an STA-40. Oh, God. Here are normal weapons from the Swampy Moon. I have updated them so they now no longer have a sprint ability as that will interfere with the heat as I'll demonstrate in a second. Yeah, pretty normal. Now I shall demonstrate the armory. So if I just kill myself. Wait for myself to respawn. Yes, you would have noticed <coughs> sorry my voice is breaking up. Um you would have noticed that I had an M4 in my inventory at first. Um, I can easily fix that, but it's just the way uh, the guns are loaded, because you originally start off in the Hostiles team for a fraction of a second. The scripts kick in before that, they give you weapons. But every time after your first spawn time, you'll get the proper weapon, so... Yeah, whatever. Okay, now if you have noticed, I do not have any weapons. But if I go and come over here to the armory, aha, uh -huh, we have a few weapons. Now I've made this so you, that you can select as many weapons as you like. However, there is a weight capacity. So currently, I have six out, 60 out of 20 capacity. If I increase that and try exiting, it will do nothing. Let's try again, but this time. If we select, say, two, I'll try these two. No, actually, I'll try the ones I've bought. And exit, and it will give them to you. It worked just fine. Yes, you can't see the fire very well, which I'm going to have to improve on. I'm possibly going to use the billboard GUIs instead of fire, because it might be a bit less laggy as well because the particle effects on robots generally tend to lag an awful lot as you just saw there was some smoke coming out of the givers then that disappeared very quickly okay uh... ah yes that's what I was about to show you now if you exit this again once your weapons are there and you haven't selected anything 
they will indeed remove. So it's basically a loadout. You change your loadout whenever you uh, touch this part that's here. Yeah, great, we've got a joiner. And you can just switch out if you want. Oh, it's nice to do too quickly. There we go. Okay, now moving on to the weathering. Oops, okay. So over here, you'll notice this water looks possibly quite cold, but let's give it a try, just in case it isn't. Oh dear, I seem to have been frozen over. And yes, that that's one small problem, which can easily be fixed. The heat GUI doesn't change, but as soon as you get on here, it will change. And yes, uh, fires will warm you up if you are in their vicinity of area of effect. And Becoming cold it decreases your warp speed to a crawl. Uh, the mi minimum uh, warp speed you'll have is five, and that's when you have no heat, as I just demonstrated. Also, let's take a look this way. As this is a building, why don't we step inside and see if there's any heating? Ah, so my heat seems to be going up. If I walk out again, it stops going up. If I walk in again, it starts going up again. Okay, so let me just glitch it. This teleport tool, of course, won't be in the actual game. If I teleport off here now, it will glitch. Well, it should glitch the heat on. So I can just continue with showing you around. So, anyway, this is a uh, capture point. I can't capture it currently, and there are a few problems to which I've managed to produce in the latest update that have broken them but they were working fine before that so I can just restore to the pre previous version or fix it but basically you'll stand stand on the point it'll get thinner and thinner until it gets to a thinness of nothing then it'll grow out again but in the color of the capturing team and values will be fed into well values yeah into a GUI which will be displaying the capture value of each control point on the map and there will be about four of these I think I already have several there's that oh god there's this one this one this one and possibly one in the actual base which is why I'm about to move on to. I shall get there using this, this Humvee. This is just a test Humvee. I was testing a drive system, but it comes in handy for traversing the map sometimes, if it doesn't lag, as robots physics tend to lag nowadays. It's only really when there's more people online. And I guarantee that this is nothing to do with my vehicle in particular. Anyway, yeah. Vehicle integrity basically from gunshots if you take this vehicle takes damage dynamically to each part of the vehicle now over here is going to be a quarry for digging and mining for ores hang on a sec yes indicators blah 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 brakes and also I can do the following yeah it is, it is still a bit faulty which is why I'm probably going probably going to replace the whole script. It was just a test though. It sometimes loses grip. Let me just demonstrate this. If I can get it to, no, I can't get it to flip over. Okay, I'll just demonstrate the damage. You will take massive damage well yeah, that happens. And you should be up yeah, you can see the fire there. Driving into water with a vehicle is not a very good idea I must say. Anyway, I shall show you the raiders and well, several raiders ways in actually, and I shall show you around the rest of the base as it is in its current form. So one of the ways in is this hole, which I've well, it's a tunnel, which takes you into the water cooling system of the generator inside the main floor. So you can exit through here if need be. Definitely, I actually click that. There we go. 
wait for it to close. It's basically an airlock. It'd be far better if robot's water was dynamically flowing. So yeah, water cooling system goes around those pipes, goes into the main building. And I shall show you another way. So this is basically the outside courtyard. Around here is uh, way into the base, yada yada yada. But I'm going to show you this for way in first. As this will be, po probably be what raiders are using the most. Come on. Hurry up. Okay. So you can swim through this pipe up here. Which will bring you into the pipe that it follows on through on the outside of that small uh, chamber that you saw just then. Now, one word of caution to raiders is that there are fans in here. In these areas here, there are fans that will chop you up. And if I go, say, to, uh, I think I may as well demonstrate it. If I go to left or right in one of these areas, I will get sucked into the fan. Because there is a very strong current there. Basically, swim down the middle and you'll be fine. But it's just a deterrent to make people careful. Okay. Basically, that just leads around to the end of here, which then takes you inside, which I'll follow on from here. So there's another way in. You can come through here, or you can actually get up there as well by jumping on top of the pipe and then climbing on the roof of the boat house. Yes, that's another thing. I will be adding boats to this place. So there will be a boat situated in here and at the Raiders base. Eventually. Yes, these are rather neat doors that I made. And this is where you'll come out. You will come out here. You'll literally fall out of the pipe. Don't even ask. Don't Just do not ask why I've done that. Just imagine there's a leak or something. And this is the waiting room for the conference room. I'm probably not going to have a meeting room or a meeting table. This will probably do the job just fine. So yeah, I've, last time I, I think there's like 36 seats. I didn't I don't actually remember. There's enough seats for uh, all the people you can fit in the server. And this place is certainly empty yet. I've got a lot of stuff to add. The decoration and um, aesthetics of everything have not been finished anywhere near enough yet. Outside the terrain still has lots of stuff to be added. I'll just show you the garage. This will be where you can spawn vehicles from, like a console here, and you can spawn a tank, etc. And these doors will have, oh yes, that's one thing I also need to work on. These doors will have their control elsewhere. They will ha actually, I might rethink that, but I was planning to have the controls through here in this security room, which doesn't exist yet. But there would be consoles showing different areas of the map through cameras. Okay, let's head up here. Yes, I've reinvented the telepad from the Swampy Moon. It actually lifts, you know. And we are outside onto the top of the fort. This is a good area for snipers. Okay, and here is the armory inside the base. Same as at the raiders area. In here, I will have a teleport room and possibly some other things, but it's, it was primarily meant to be a teleport area for teleporting to other forts, etc. Yeah, you can come back around here. There's a 10 second timeout for the, these telepa telepads. And through here is the way up to the tower, or the top of it. There's plenty of room inside the tower, as you've probably guessed, because that goes up a long way and there's nothing underneath here currently, and nothing up here. I have a lot of ideas for what I can add, it's just that they haven't really been built yet, so that's understandable. And through here is the uh, workroom. Ooh! Piers, yes. Aha, I can demonstrate in a few minutes, uh, in a minute, the storm that's going on. You notice the fog has got thicker all of a sudden. 
yeah, finer, etc. And then up here, we have the jail block. Um, jail block. Different color doors to indicate that they are bad. There's no switch. There's no button on the inside, as I shall show you. See, so you can lock hostiles away in there. Now let's head out this way. I think. I haven't shown you up here. It's not much. It's just another way out onto the other side of the garage, up above. But yeah, you can note you can see how foggy it is. Very foggy. And you have also noticed, or should have noticed, that I've now started getting cold as I walked outside. So I've walked back in and I'm warm. Don't mu ask me about realistic dynamics. I know it's not realistic, but it's authentic, kind of. So if you go out there, heating. Not heating. And my walk speed will gradually decrease to a crawl, as I demonstrated with jumping in the water. But that's instant with the water. So yeah, I'm gradually getting slower, stand by a fire and it will warm you up. Now, one last thing I want to show you is the following. So if I just reset, this is faster. These storms will get on your nerves, I'm telling you. But they are handy, no, a neat little thing to add. Now that's weird. That's possibly a fault. Bear in mind that these footprints are added to the debris service. Debris service. So they should remove after 30 seconds I set them as. Anyway, let's go through here because we're getting cold. And there we go. And the storm stopped. As I said, they last from 2.5 minutes to 10 minutes. I'm just going to get myself a suit. <laughs> You will, these will be buyable from a shop that we will have here eventually. Along with other items like throwables. I shall quickly demonstrate the suit. Some Vactobians will have seen this before. Boosters out, in. Gun, in, out. Gun with C, boosters with V. And to activate the boosters, it's F. And as you can see over here, we have fuel. And your speed display down there. And also, we have this shield bar, which I shall demonstrate. Uh, yeah, so if you take damage, your shields will automatically re regenerate your health extra fast, basically. You have... Oh, God. That wasn't a good idea. You have 128 HP with this suit on, rather than the standard 100. Um, oh yes, it was on a different server where I brought guns. Um, from 0 to 70 it will be health, from 70 to 120 it will class as shields. So when it's down here you'll have 70 health. Okay, let's get some weapons. Let's get a whole load. So, as I as many of you won't have seen these weapons before, I may as well demonstrate all of them, I suppose. No, we don't need the grenade, because that's the same as the standard Vectorian grenade. Ah, oh, crap. God damn it. Bear with me. Oh. There we go. Oh, for God's sake. Mine, mine my typing is failing today. Oh. There we go. It's giving me that. So now I can demonstrate the shotgun, 
which is brand new. Um, I may size down this GUI so far. The actual design of it was made by Liam 1313. There's different sounds for each weapon, unlike with the Factovian weapons. This has a fire rate of one shot every second. And I believe I set it to do 60 damage on a direct hit with all pellets. So it's pretty powerful. And of course you can crouch. Yeah, I'm just checking that these are all spelled right. I think so. Have I got any weapons in my backpack? I think all the ones I'm going to show you are out. Basic, this is basically a variant of the VC32, as you can probably tell. But I have modified the barrel and the scope. Not the design of the scope yet, I need to change that. And also I need to update the crosshairs, as they are the same on every weapon currently. So yeah, this is pretty powerful. Same effect as the VC32, if you fire it without scoping, that happens. If you fire it with a scope, it's extremely accurate. And we'll deal 100 hit points of damage. Uh, in the next version of weapons, I do intend to add hit points, uh, hit markers to certain areas of the body. And here we have pretty much an STA-11. It's an SMG, and it's silenced, so it should be a lot quieter. Yeah. It, fires, it has exactly the same stats as the STA-11, I believe. Now this, this is the biggest weapon you're going to find. It's yeah. It's actually taller than I am. Um, I may have uh, increased the sc uh, no scaled it down by not a bit small enough factor or large enough factor, whichever it is. It's a bit too big. But I suppose I can change that if it gets becomes a problem. As a bipod like the STA three doesn't currently have a use, but I may add a use eventually. And these, of course, are all designed on the weapons from Kill Zone. So I believe this has the same stats as the STA-3. And finally, we have the good old M82 again. All oh, have changed sounds, though. And let's see what this guy's going to do. Let's shoot him, shall we? And he's going to run away. I'll just reload while he takes his time. I should demonstrate the shotgun actually, because you're probably waiting to see that. Oh, he's wanting to kill me. That was an indirect hit. And he's dead. He's had a bolt just as I killed him. But yeah, this is a fairly fairly good weapon. It's only short range, as a shotgun should be. And that's about it. So thank you for joining me guys. I hope you enjoyed this log. I shall be uh, making more of these and showing you more updates. Stroudy out.